I don't think I'm going trick-or-treating this year. What? Come on, you're gonna break a six-year streak. Yeah, six years of being jumped and egged. Maybe I'm getting too grown up. Three seconds on the clock. I'm playing basketball. It's time for an in-your-face disgrace! Are you okay? My nose is in my brain! Let me see. Oh, my God. What? You're a dork. Welcome back, everybody, to the Film Bros Podcast. My name is Isaiah Lucas, and I am joined by my co-hosts. Abraham and Nick. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm all right. I'm a little tired. A little tired? I'm doing all right as well. Good. I'm glad to hear it. How are you? How are you? Yeah. I'm doing okay as well. I'm uh, feeling it in the tired the tired portion. It was a long day at work today, dude. Yeah. I don't know what it was, but after dinner tonight, I laid on the couch, and I was getting some, yeah. some stuff ready for for our episode and I was sitting there just going <laughs> dozing dozing off and then I was like okay I need to stand up I need to go do some do, do some chores or something mm-hmm. like that so I can like wake myself up and and stay ready for this episode yeah when, yeah. when we say good night we really mean it it's late yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're going me me <laughs> yeah, yeah. seriously so. oh man I want to know because this movie that we are reviewing today has it feels like it's been a part of my childhood for so long. I remember it for so long. Um, and I, I guess we could probably introduce the movie before I ask my question. But Yeah, uh, I chose the 2006 film Monster House. It was uh, directed by Gil Keenan and written by Dan Harmon, Rob Schraub, Trab Schraub, Trab Trab. and Pamela Peddler. Yeah. Peddler. And, and you want to know something? When I wrote down those credits, I was like, Dan Harmon. That sounds so familiar. What That's is the done? co-creator of Rick and Morty. Is it? Dan Harmon? Really? Dan Harmon is the co-creator of Rick and Morty. Oh. Never seen it. Alongside uh, the other guy, Rick. What's his name? I forget. I forget I his name. I forget his name, too. Yeah, he Interesting. is. Interesting. He's a writer. Yeah. And I was like, man, why does th- why does that name look so familiar? Dan, Dan Harmon. Is this where he get his, his start from, or did, has he done stuff earlier than this too? He, I don't, I'm not entirely sure. I didn't do a deep dive on him, but I just knew his name looked familiar. Uh-oh. And um, yeah, when I looked him up, I was like, oh, that makes me- that makes sense. I every time I watched Rick and Morty, I would see his name go created by Dan Harmon and oh, what's that other fool's name? Homeboy. I feel like when I hear this name, I'd be like, of course, there, yeah, there it is. Okay. What is it? The names that he writes Justin. for. Justin. Justin Roland? Roland. Yes, yes, that's what it is. Yes. Yes, the okay. The names that, of stuff that he writes for is kind of crazy. Oh, I've seen that he wrote one called Computer Man, and it stars uh, Jack Black, and he's like part computer, part man. <laughs> it looks ridiculous. I can't what? say this one, but this one, it's a short, and it says, a shocking P word. Keyword. Yeah. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> yeah. A shocking P word. That's funny. I don't want to really say that. Oh, yeah. Number two. Uh, oh, there's one and two. There's one oh, and two. Great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he's Laser sick. fart. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Rick and Morty. So yeah, that makes sense for Rick and Morty. That's for sure. Okay. Let me ask you this. Have you ever talked to someone about Monster House and they didn't like it? No. 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 I can't, like, I can't think of a time where someone said, Monster House, oh, that movie sucks. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think it's just universally praised. Or it's just like people know it and they're like, yo, never cracker. Yeah. Like, you know, I've never heard of a single bad thing about it. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say was that this movie has been so, it feels like such a piece of my childhood because like even after watching it, anywhere me and my brothers moved, if we had a crabby old neighbor, we were calling him never cracker. Yeah. And like, like I remember specifically, we lived in this cul-de-sac, 
and um we were out in the at the end of the cul-de-sac playing uh with a soccer ball like just trying to keep it up and stuff and we were like kicking it hard like seeing how high we could get it and it flew into our our next door neighbor's lawn and she had these like white like spikes that would um surround her her little front yard and then like the spikes would be in between like these like little stone pillar things mm. and so um a couple of times like from from days before it, we would kick it over we would just hop it real quick and and like grab it and then come back and this specific time it happened and she came out the lady came out and she grabbed the ball and went she popped it on the spike and then threw it out and i and we were like dude what the heck and she was like keep your soccer balls out of my lawn that's never cracked and i was like that's mrs never cracker <laughs> and we just th- th- it stuck and so like ever since then anywhere we moved if we had like a crabby old neighbor they were never nah, you know what i'm out. doing up for payback i'm i'm poopy on her lawn. <laughs> no, you got to do it in a brown paper bag. And light, light it on, on fire. And light it so when they go to step on it. <laughs> <laughs> like that reminds me of uh, Billy Madison. <laughs> Does it? Yeah, when they light the they light the poo bag on fire. <laughs> right on, right in, on her doormat. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a good way. Or, this or was a, hey, we could have done it too and got away with it because this was before, before the age camera. of rings. Like oh, ring so you, cameras and, mm-hmm. and stuff like I that. I did so many things before the age of ring cameras. What is it where they would say like if you put <laughs> if you put bologna and mustard on someone's on car, car, it rips the paint. Does off it or really something? do that? I don't know. I always heard that. Yeah, I never wanted to try it because I thought I'd get killed for yeah. it. But I never done yeah. that. No, I egging was was my uh, my jam. We would TP. I love TP. Yeah. Egging is just so sad. Yeah, I did some bad things when I d- I would pee on toilet paper roll and then throw it. This guy Dang, with peeing, dude. bro. <laughs> yeah, he just pees on everything and anywhere. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's in the corner of his room or if it's, <laughs> on, or, or, or if it's on some toilet paper. And you would pee on that, John, and throw it like a like kind of like a Molotov. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it would splatter. It would splatter. <laughs> so then they would have to like clean it. Like imagine, I would, dude, I would throw it on some garages and it would just. Oh, oh. that's tough. That's filthy. You're I brave. was that kid. You're brave. No glove. No, I don't have gloves. I don't have gloves. He's going. Like no, he's getting I, it I all ready. I would have like winter gloves, like the <laughs> cotton ones. <laughs> so kind of, it wouldn't matter. Cause it would Seep through, dude. <laughs> yeah. Just ring it out. Keep going. <laughs> but yeah, this this movie has been a part of my my childhood for a long time and whenever i was mentioning to you guys at the end of the last episode that i feel like i didn't even need to watch it i could like go scene for scene no joke every we were, when we were rewatching it i was speaking lines before they were like even about to come up mm. and like knew immediately was going to be said and all of this stuff and I'm not gonna lie. I had fun watching it again. It yeah. was it was nice to to revisit because it not only took me down memory lane, but it also let me watch this movie through a different lens than I ever have before. And uh, yeah, it's it's given me some new insight on the film that I never previously had. I think. So. Mm. Yeah, I still think it's just as surprising as it was when I first watched it as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it g- has a lot of twists that you wouldn't expect for a what seems to be a kids movie. Yeah. Um, I think they do a lot of a lot of really uh, interesting stuff with the characters here. Yeah, definitely. So it'll be yeah. It, w- it was a little while too, especially the ending, because uh, you figure like a um, a house that comes to life and is like walking around. How how do they get away with it <laughs> and yeah. stuff like that? And it was interesting to 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 think about it in that way, not just be like, oh yeah, I'm entertained, but more like, okay, how could this literally happen? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um. So that was interesting too. Yeah, I want to ask you guys real quick before we dive into any spoilers or anything like that. Did you guys ever play the game? No, but I saw there was. I'm looking at some of the stills, and there's a still right here of a PSP game. Yeah, so I remember playing it on the PlayStation Two. And what do you do? You got the little so- super soakers. Yes, and you like fight like uh, the household items. All that? No, you fight. Yeah, well, yeah, it's at one point, but. You fight like household items, like what? they're like like chairs that come to life that you gotta like squirt the no guns way. with and everything. It was like a survival horror game for what like, the heck, really? Yeah, almost. And it was 
it was fun. I remember having fun with it. But my favorite part of that whole game was that there was a mini game and you could actually play the arcade game that Skull plays called Thou Art Dead. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. And I would, I put so many more hours into that mini game than the actual game. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, like I had so much fun with it. Just it's kind of like the around, chopping, yeah, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's like, like uh, what is that Contra? Yeah, or something almost. Yeah. Yeah. Contra, so it's similar to that, yeah. like the old school. Yeah, but I would just I put way more hours into the, into that mini game than I did ever did the like main story. But uh, yeah, I remember having fun with it. A that's game for sure. that is that's wild. Yeah, 2006. I mean, I f- every movie was getting games at the time. So yeah, it just makes sense. Yeah, that reminds me too of uh, because I remember like if there was a movie that I really liked, I wanted to get the video game because I felt like they could expand upon it, and um, I'd always like been done right, or at least it felt like I was done right whenever they like adapted the movies into games and stuff, and then the one time that I got let down was with the the Iron Man game. Oh yeah, Mm -hmm. that got released on PlayStation Mm Two, and I was thinking, oh dude. It's going to be free roam. You're going to f- be able to fly around in Iron Man's suit nope. and destroy stuff. And other That's going to be sick. And then I played it, and it's like all mission-based. And you are either glued to the, to the floor as Iron Man, or there are specific missions where you can fly. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this the, at the time, it, it was like 20 bucks a game back then. At the time, for me, no longer. I was like, dude. Yeah. That was a waste of my twenty dollars that I earned. Like, I'm I'm pissed. And then if you wanted to sell it back to GameStop, they're like, "We'll give you three bucks for it." And I'm like, "Dude, You're just gonna sell it for twelve? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> terrible. I hate games. <laughs> <laughs> that was our childhood. Yep, our childhood. I miss it. Yep. Dude. That and and Halo. Dude. And Dude. Hearing Oh, mm. dude, dude, so good. Catch me waking up before school to play around or two. Of that. <laughs> really? Yes, yes. The Halo yeah, was, was my game. opposite, bro. I would wake up and want to play some racing games. I play like Need for Speed before I go to school. I never got into the racing games. I never uh, got to play before school. It was always after. My parents had like the strict rule of like you have to finish your homework, mm-hmm. and then once you're done, you can play. Well, I'm glad. And so, like, for the longest time, when I finished my homework, I was playing Tony Hawk. <laughs> I was going out there to play Tony Hawk. And then it, it eventually grew to, like, uh, Need for Speed and racing, well, other racing games. And then, like, oh. Guitar Hero. And then when I got my 360, it was Halo. Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Skate, I'm so glad I never like, went to Xbox. Xbox at the time was making it. It was killing 360 it. was the one to have. 360 was, f- and, th- and they would just say, PS- PS3, you got to go to here. We don't have to pay for online. Yeah. But it was worth it. I, and, uh, and I you had a PS3. You couldn't even, the only currency it took was Microsoft points. Yep. So I remember going to Molan's, yep. giving my mom the money, her giving me her card so I could go and get Microsoft points. And they never gave you enough for like one <laughs> game. You always, and then you were always left over with like three of them. Yep. Or, or you had to go get uh, like a Microsoft point card yes. from like a Rite Aid or yep. something mm-hmm. and buy it there. And then you activate the code and all that. Scratch out the bag. Yeah. 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 I remember I had a 360 and then my house got broken into and it got stolen. And then we, my parents ended up getting a, a communal PS3 for me and my brothers. And at the time I was like, oh, hey, this is sick. I don't have to pay for it online. I could just play. Yeah. Like I, all I have to do is create an account. Um. But then they eventually changed it, and I was like, "Man, now I have to pay for online here as well." And then you can never win. Yeah, yeah. Feels like the days were simpler back then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it's objectively true that they were <laughs> just <laughs> straight simpler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. My it's eyes okay. water, and I'm trying to it's keep okay. it in check. He's thinking of Halo Three. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the first. You see time. that video of the guy going? You see this right here? <laughs> yeah, it's <This> right here. <laughs> I feel like yeah. that too. All right, it's not even that old. Yeah, let's like, talk about Monster House. <laughs> What's your favorite scenes? Well, let's let's give a synopsis first and yes. a spoiler warning if you haven't seen the thing, and then we'll get into it. It's kind of hard for a synopsis. Monster for this movie. house. Yeah, <laughs> it's a mo- about a monster. About a house that's a monster. No, 
It's about uh, a kid. His name is DJ. Um, we don't really know what DJ stands for. but Polly D. <laughs> 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 he took me off there. <laughs> um, his name is DJ, and he lives across the street from this old guy at this creepy house. And he has been documenting these weird events that this old guy does. And right now, it's a, this at this time, it's Halloween, and he just knows something's is up, and something's off, and we get to see this house show its true colors, and s- see what this kid is really talking about, and see if he's really going crazy or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I I have to say, I feel like every middle schooler at some point found themselves kind of in this area where like you get so fascinated with something or so like I guess for the lack of a better word obsessed with something oh yeah and like for me it was like the like creepypasta like internet lore type things and like at the time it was like slender man yeah. oh really yeah and like knowing about that stuff that like I remember just being like I gotta know more about the the lore behind this. This is just so Seven interesting. Seven pages what's on the notes. Yeah, and all this stuff, and like feeling like a crazy person telling anybody that didn't know about it, <laughs> like you know. And so I feel like DJ probably felt the same thing. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, no, you understand this guy's creepy. He stole tricycles. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah. You know. Um. So I feel like anybody that has been through middle school can definitely relate to these characters and uh not only that but just the plight of like trying to get your parents or somebody older to understand something and they just and them not getting it and not even that they just don't even want to give you the time of day either they're just like yeah yeah you know house is alive whatever yeah sure buddy yeah kind of just shoving you under the rug right i could see that it's It's just your imagination you're just a kid Yeah. yeah exactly and that happens all throughout the movie too so yeah so if you haven't seen the movie, check it out. It is currently streaming on Hulu. So if you have that streaming platform, go check it out and get a refresher. Or if you haven't seen the movie, check it out for the first time there. Rent it. Pick up a copy physically. Whatever you want to do. Um, if you care about spoilers, we will be talking about the movie heavily and in detail. So if uh, spoilers aren't your thing, pause it. Come back. If you don't mind, continue listening. Or uh, get a refresher and check back in with us and see what you think. So, as always, we'll start off with our first category, which is favorite scenes. Yeah. And uh, actually, my favorite scene doesn't start until a little bit after. It's when Crowder gets hit. Crowder gets hit by the car. Oh, okay. See, I got the, the whole that whole intro. I like, the intro is so yeah. good, but it's not my favorite. The little girl on her trike. La, 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 la. Yeah. It's iconic to me. It is. Like, as soon as I hear... As soon as I put on Monster House, I expect that red text to pop up and hear the, like, ominous music mm-hmm. for some reason. Like, opens up with it. And it's like, <laughs> and it's like super, like, it opens up and you're like, what am I about to get myself into? And mm-hmm. then, you know, you watch the leaf kind of float its way down, Forrest Gump style uh-huh. almost, and follow the girl. She doesn't got a care in the world. And, you know, she ends up getting stuck right in someone's lawn. You follow the leaf comes back and she's like like getting almost sucked into the house like it's breathing it looks like yeah well and we end up seeing that the 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 leaf ends up going to the house and gets sucked under the door and then it opens and you're like yeah and i that reveal of mr nevercracker is so scary scary. it is scary like him just emerging from the darkness and having this like like almost like like golem look on his face you know yeah and he's like breathes he's like (laughs) yeah (laughs) And then <laughs> as soon as he comes out there, and he just goes, get off my lawn! And just starts running at the girl. Yes. Can you tell how yeah. crazy this is, Steve Buscemi? That is yeah. so wild to it, me. It honestly <laughs> fits, though. It I, is I, I him, like, though. Like, physically, it's, it's him. Because <laughs> I, I, I feel like his voice just fits there. Though, yeah. You know? Well, you think I also think about a crazy old man, and I think of Steve Buscemi. Like, yeah. I immediately can think of a cra- – if I think of a crazy old man who's saying, get off my lawn, I think of a guy, Steve Buscemi, or Carl from Up. <laughs> okay. Just crotchety, yeah, angry like, old man. Like, those – and it, it fits so perfect. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, the casting definitely works here mm-hmm. in regard. I think for everybody, actually. I think yeah. the casting really does work. I have no qualms. But I think the thing that I love so much about the intro here is that on a rewatch, you understand that he's he's really yeah. just trying to protect people and mm-hmm. keep them away so that way they don't get eaten. Yeah. But he even that like, doesn't even say that at certain points. So he was like, you want to get eaten? Yeah. And he, he says it to the girl and he says, like, uh, do you want to be eaten alive? Yeah. And no, like I on a, on a first watch, that kind of primes you to be like, oh, he eats people, you know, like and that's where they get this idea of like. Oh, he ate his wife. Yeah. You know, he says he eats people. Do you want to be eaten alive and all this stuff? Yeah. But uh, on a rewatch, you recognize, like, he's really just trying to keep people away from it so that way they can stay alive. Mm. Um, but then it also calls into question, like, okay, you know, he, he like, scares the little girl away. He steals her trike. He breaks that He job. breaks it. <laughs> Dude, he's like, strong. Why does he break it? I don't know. It doesn't explain. There's no justification for him to, like, Rip the tire off of it <laughs> and then take it from her. Yeah, like so that he, way she doesn't come back. She knows to not come back, and now she's like scarred forever. Yeah, <laughs> seeing this crotchety old man yell at her to break her bike in front of her. Yeah, there's no need to be that. <laughs> yeah. he, needs up. To, he needs to. He needs to. Um, so that he's an alpha. True. He's maybe guess. maybe it's because maybe he's thinking like if I scare them hard enough, they won't ever come around here again. Oh, uh, I'm thinking it's like. He is so dominated in the house that he just needed that one little chance to show, like, I'm still a person. I'm yeah. still, I still have power. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. No. But yeah, I when I saw that and I watched the full movie He's in context, jerk. I was like, how did that justify him, like, ripping to shred the bike yeah no like he's a jerk they do it just to say like this is a crotchy old man this is the enemy of the story yeah they really build him up to be like you know he's a He's the worst. Yeah. But then when the switch happened, you kind of o- almost feel bad yeah. for feeling that way. Yeah. So I can I see why they make him to be so so over the top. Yeah. Mean. Yeah, but then from there he kind of walks back to his home and he you know and feels you, like someone's watching him. Yeah. He turns around and looks across the street and you hear him go, <laughs> and then like you hear a camera flash and then all of a sudden. Um, the camera zooms into this telescope and goes right into DJ, and he felt like he was staring right at him. He, as was. he was looking at him. Yeah. Um, I I just I love the whole intro to D, to DJ as well, and then also the intro to Chowder, <laughs> which was part of your favorite scene here. Yeah, we we a little bit. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, DJ's parents are actually about to leave, and they're good. I think they're just going away for the night. Um, doing something because some vacation. Guy's got a tooth. He's got like a, <laughs> like a. He must be a dentist or something. I don't know. But he's got like some sort of like fake Golden tooth. tooth with him. Yeah, I don't know. And they're going somewhere overnight, whatever. And and basically, uh, right now they're saying bye. And this is just such romance one because the dad does not want to say bye to this kid. <laughs> doesn't want to say I love you. Nothing. The mom is just like, okay, bye, love you. Yeah. Come on. She's yeah. being kind of overbearing yeah. in yeah. some aspects. And I think the dad is more or less like, okay, we said it. We're good. Like, Let's go. Yeah, yeah. like he's a boy. He's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so they're backing up, and we get to see um, we see a little kid in the background wearing this fish mask. And you hear, <laughs> and you get him hit, and he's just standing there. Like, he <laughs> just stunned him. Mm-hmm. And he he's probably my favorite character of the movie. And he goes, it's okay, yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> and that's Crowder. It's yeah. Chowder. Chowder. Why do I keep on saying Crowder? I don't know. Yeah, Cra- Ch- I was going to say, too, Ch- Chowder, he's great, man. He's got some of the funniest yeah. lines ever. I have to say, too, as a kid, when I saw that mask, that I, alien I, mask, yeah, I wanted it. I immediately was always like, that mask is so cool looking, mm-hmm. I want one. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's, I kind of lumped that in with my whole intro of the film, and then also kind of lump it into like whenever they're playing with the basketball and it goes into Nepercracker's lawn. Uh, yeah, yeah. Isn't this this is when he croaks, right? Yes. This is a bro moment, dude. Yeah, yeah this I have is my favorite scene. Okay, go ahead and hit it. Because, gosh, how how terrifying this would be as a child to go through this. They are oh, playing yeah. basketball. They're He's trying to decide if they're going to go trick-or-treating or not. You know, they've been the past, what was it, nine years or four years or something? Six-year streak. Yeah, they're on a year streak to go. And he's saying, 
no, we're not going to do it. We're too old for all that. We're we're done trick or treating. And you know, he starts trying to p- use his basketball, juke him out. He shoots. They're just making it. And then uh, Chatter shoots, hits the rim. I think it hits his head. And yeah, yeah. It goes into the yard. Yeah. You gotta have a bouncy head. <laughs> yeah, to bounce that boy. Yeah, and of course, DJ knows that house. Something's going on there. I know. Yeah. But they wait a little bit, and Nevercracker doesn't come out yet. So they figure maybe he's asleep. Yeah, and you know, all the while Chowder is telling him, "Go get my ball, man. There's yeah. 26 bucks. Yeah. You know how many times you know try to work to get that? As hard as I've worked in my entire yeah. life." And he's also scared to do it himself. Yeah, he's, he's like, "He's like, well, DJ, you're grown up now. You go get it." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> and um, he ends up going finally. I keep by, I guess by push or something like that. Yeah, and he's making his way there, and I, he gets to the ball right, and then the door's opening. Yep. And guess who comes out? Mr. Crotchety Man himself. Yep. And he he's saying, like, I think he knows him. Yeah. Because he looks at him and he's he like, goes, yo. Yeah. He's like, yo. Yeah. And he, I don't know. He's, like, chasing him. I'm trying to remember exactly the choreography of it all. Yeah. I think he's, like, isn't he, like, kind of juking him out a little he bit, like too? He, like, dodges him. Something like that. Because I was so, I was oh so, like, so upset because I was like, dude, don't. He literally stares at him and lets him run at him. True. And I was like, he's kinda just like, pick up the ball, go. <laughs> or toss the ball back yeah. and run or something. And he goes and he like just jukes him and then they start chasing each other basically. True. And just finally. The, the part that I was so surprised by as a kid is when he picks him up and he's like, you want to die? And yeah. then he goes, and you want to. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then falls on top of him. Yeah. Like, and he's, and he's all, like, so there's stiff, bro. Stiff. <laughs> like, Dude, he's literally like a possum. <laughs> and you freaking see his teeth, and he's just like a like, crotchy old man. He's like, yeah. as a, imagine going through that as a kid. That's traumatizing. I would be like, <laughs> like I, I killed this guy. I killed this guy. This no, guy, he, I literally, he literally said, I just murdered a guy. Yeah. And he goes, goes, no. No, nah, when it's an accident. Technically, when you did it, what you did is an accident. They call it manslaughter. <laughs> 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 That's one of my favorite quotes. <laughs> yeah. But as a kid, man, that really took me off guard because he dies, or so you think. I mean, he literally looks like he's dead. Yeah. And I mean, you would you would think it's a heart attack or yeah. a stroke it's 100%, or something, dude. Yeah. I think another part of this scene that I think is so funny too is Chowder, like whenever he DJ's getting chased, he's not doing anything to help DJ. He's just like <laughs> he's Come just on! going. Help! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, <laughs> screaming for yes, help. Yes, yes, yes. It's like, dude, this kid could just go there and, like, try and help him out at some point. Two, he's just two like, no. Dude, you see how frail that guy is? Yeah. Dude, you could just... Exactly. Chop and him his and arm's dead. broken. Like, Juke him. Yeah. Yeah, break his ankle, yeah. bro. Yeah, and I think this is even, too, where we start getting the little hints that the house is not what it seems. Because, you know, you see the little window when, and when it's him uh, or when it's DJ and Chowder. And you see the window kind of cracking. <laughs> Yeah, and then you see too when they're taking Nevercracker away, the fire like fire gets lit. No, it get well the the little gurney. Oh yeah, one the of little, the wheels gets caught, yeah, and then it gets the soaked into Sucked the ground. In. So you're thinking, well, I, we obviously we already know, but if you yeah. didn't, you'd be like, oh, something. This house is alive, or you know, something's going on with this house. Um, and that's this is where it starts, I think, because the, the fire starts and the house lost its lover, yeah. pretty much. So, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to talk about one of that favorite scenes because it was pretty wild. Yeah. So my my next favorite scene from here um, isn't until we get to talk to Skull. Okay. But I want to talk about a scene in this movie that really scared me the first time that I saw it when <laughs> I was a kid. Which one? And it was like, I think... The Girl Scout? No, it was the... Um, the the house projecting its shadow into, Danny's ro- uh, into DJ's room. Yes. That's it freaked me out as a I'm kid. I, I would, like, I, yeah. Like afterwards, you know, DJ is already freaked out that he like is responsible for killing a guy, and you know everybody kept telling him that like you know this guy didn't need to be you didn't need to worry about it or anything like that. He's completely fine. You're totally seeing stuff, and so like he, you know he goes upstairs and he falls asleep, and right as he falls asleep the room turns red Mm -hmm. and the shadow of this house casts into his window. And then you see the, the, the shades come up. It's like eyes open up and the door opens and this hand reaches out of the doorway and Mm -hmm. onto Danny and then grabs him and shakes him awake. 
Yeah. And as a kid, I saw that and was <laughs> like, dude, what the heck is going on? This is freaky. Yeah. And, and if you notice the subtle foreshadowing, too, when the hand comes up, it's not just a, any old normal hand. It's a, a bigger hand. Yeah. To to f- you know subtly foreshadow who it's constant exactly who yeah. the who the house really is yeah uh, it, it was I was surprising when I saw that because I was like they really you know took that small little detail in yeah. into account so yeah that was cool yeah but from here um, to give the scene that I'm going to talk about a little context there have been more uh, more there's been another person who has seen the the sightings of the house go crazy and at this point it's now. Uh, Chowder and who we now know is Jenny. Yes. And Jenny is the Girl Scout who um, she's kind of going around. Or she's not a Girl Scout. She's selling stuff for her school. Her yeah. Yeah. School. yeah. And she, man, she is a connoisseur. She's an aunt. What, she's, she's like a an freaking, entrepreneur. Yes. That's what it is. She, she knows what by, she's doing. She knows what she's she doing. She knows her market. She goes by houses and is like, if you don't have candy to sell, you're twice as likely to get <laughs> TP'd and egged and all that stuff, so you might want to buy some candy. Yeah. And, of course, uh, the babysitter, Elizabeth, or as she likes to be called, Z, she's like, don't care, it's not my house. <laughs> and she's like, are you a babysitter? She's like, yep. And he's like, okay. Well, I'll tell you what. You buy candy. Um, like, we'll call it, like, you, you know, you give me 40 bucks or something oh, like that. I'll write the receipt. Yeah. yeah, I'll write the receipt for 30 and you keep 10 and then I'll go, and she's like, "All right, well, if we do that, then I get two extra bags of this or something like that." And they're they just they just haggle essentially with one another. And then, um, right as they're you know finishing up their business, Chowder and DJ have stayed up all night, you know, making just making sure that nothing has happened. If there's any been, been any movement or anything like that throughout the night, and right as they're about to walk out, Z walks up with some chocolate. And we find out that they've been peeing in bottles. They haven't slept all night and all this stuff. <laughs> and then they look in the they look in the telescope and they see Jenny walking by. And they're like, oh, this beautiful girl. Oh, my gosh. And so they're sitting there, like, staring at her and being all mesmerized by her. And then they recognize, oh, she's walking up to Neppercracker's house. Yeah. we got to stop her. This is crazy. Yeah. And so, you know, they run outside and they're like, hey, girl. Don't don't go any further. And then eventually, you know, the house reveals itself and tries to to eat Jenny. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I always thought it was so sick when the sidewalk goes, goes <laughs> and it's like slowly yeah. bringing her in. I was like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, it's almost like like a like a roller coaster from hell, almost. You know, because <laughs> she's like in her little like like cart like her radio wagon. flyer <laughs> wagon thing. And she's getting rocked back and forth and in and, mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And they eventually pull her out and then bring her outside. And it's um it's a, a wild ride for a couple of seconds. But now they DJ and Chowder have somebody else who has witnessed yeah. that this house is not all that it appears to be. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, they're trying to call cops. And cops don't believe them. Cops em. don't believe them. <laughs> they end up, you know, thinking that they're just, you know, out of their mind and if they you know are messing with this guy's house they're gonna come back and they're gonna go to the hole so after that they're like okay well the only other person i know that might know something about this we gotta go to to this pizza place and go and go find him and talk to him about it so they you know go to this pizza place and there's this guy <laughs> playing arcade games and um as they're going in there they're like who who is this again and they're like oh this na- this guy's name is so and so or whatever but we call him skull mm-hmm. and they're like oh why do you call him that and he's like well he's like thou he's the thou art dead champion <laughs> legend has it that he once played for like four days straight on a gallon of chocolate milk and an adult diaper <laughs> and like That's so there's so- you hear him like muttering you see him in the background being like, like oh yeah oh yeah oh. like it's Super funny. I I love his character as as much as he doesn't need to be in the movie. I feel like he's great for the couple of seconds that he's <laughs> in it. But um, they first have they at first have this hesitancy to g- approach him because he's in the game zone mm-hmm. and you don't mess with him when he's in the game zone. And so they eventually go up to him and start asking him questions. And this is like when I was a kid, I r- immediately recognized that this was 
Napoleon Dynamite, John Heater, Mm -hmm. that was voicing him because they immediately sound the same. And um, I just always thought that this character was funny. Like, the whole line, like, where they're talking and telling him all this stuff, and he's like, oh, Shut up. You guys made me want to puke into some tinfoil and then eat it. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, <laughs> one of my favorite <laughs> like, quotes. Like, it's just outlandish stuff. Um, but he eventually uh, exposition dumps to these kids that, like, there is something that he's heard of in his travels to comic conventions and all this other stuff that there are things that, you know, can inhabit human souls and you know there are there there have been said to be stories yes. about houses mm-hmm. that in, uh, inhabit uh they 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 take on human souls and then become like uh become alive mm-hmm. and um i always thought it was funny whenever he tries to say the word he was like he goes on this like whole thing he's like they get possessed by a human soul and he goes known as domus mantipolis <laughs> and everyone's all freaked out and he goes all right starts playing the game again and they're like well what do we what do we do to try to defeat it and he's like you gotta strike it at the source of life you gotta get it at the heart and then they're like okay well it might be the chimney you know that fire has been going ever since he uh, you know ever since he was taken away and then he immediately is like hey have fun getting killed like (laughs) like i won't be seeing you guys later and munches on some of their chocolate and then takes off and yeah it's a very inconsequential scene, but it is one that has like always stuck out in my mind when I think of Monster House. Mm. So, all right. Um, next favorite scenes. I'm trying to think. I my next one is the plan, the dummy plan. The yeah, one when I they love got it too. The the medicine and all yeah, that. So yeah, that's yeah. my absolute favorite plan. Yeah, yeah. The, the, my, that was my next favorite one too. Um. <laughs> It's so funny because they draw up this plan of of trying to get a bunch of cough syrup to put the house to sleep, <laughs> so they can go in and find the heart and all that stuff. You, the most ridiculous plan in the world. But I thought it was smart, bro. Do you think? So? I mean, th- they assume I, so much about the house. A person. Yeah, so but like only I, logic. If you use whatever's gonna make a person go to bed, make the house go to bed. So you got, but you gotta <laughs> use it times a hundred, right? Because the house is gigantic. Maybe they do. Make he goes it. to the pharmacy, straight up just <laughs> loads Steel, up, loots. He loots, loots all up. the cough syrup. Yes, and they the I just think the design of the thing is genius too. Yeah, you know they like come up in trash cans. Yeah, and they're like trying to sneak up to the house. <laughs> they um, it's got the broom as the hands. Got the little trick or treat basket. It's got that alien head. <laughs> I love too when they take it off and the alien head like airs up slowly. Like yeah. Yeah. I love that for no reason. And it's got the tire mark on it, obviously. <laughs> um, and it's absolutely filled with bottles. Yeah. <laughs> bottles. And it's on a vacuum to go. Mm-hmm. And, of course, she slingshots, and it hits the ding-dong. And then someone says, trick-or-treat. Let the um, let the thing go. And yeah. their, their plan is literally just about to work. Yep. Until the freaking cops pull up. Yep. And... I think this is when the cops get get a taste of the house too, right? Yes. Well, yeah, because yes, they put them is. in. They put them in. They the arrest car. them. They do. They do. They're they're in jail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Nick Cannon's character. He's like, "Did you guys hear that? You're going to jail." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Nick Cannon's movie is so funny. Uh, dude, he's great. Well, the yeah. cops are probably one of the funniest characters too. It's Kevin yeah. James and Nick Cannon. Yeah, like, they're goaded. They're funny. Yeah. He even says too, like. You keep him here. I'm gonna go investigate. Well, yeah, yeah cause he start. Uh, Nick Cannon's character it says, "You hear that? That must be the dangerous creature." Yeah, <laughs> and, and Kevin James goes, "It's just my stomach growling." Yeah, and then they're about to leave, and again the house creaks, and then like you guys said, they finally get a taste of their medicine. He yeah, pulls yeah. Out well, where the they gun. park their car too? It's on Dude. the lawn. <laughs> yeah. So, so the car's getting pulled in. Yeah. Yeah, they get. He says, "Freeze." Tree, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. he gets destroyed. Yeah. Tree picks him up, throws him inside. Yeah, how does Kevin James' character, the cop, get? Um, he says he I'm starts going out for backup. Oh yeah, yeah. He, and he goes, I thought there was no backup. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Goes, I'm getting Judy. <laughs> 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 and, 
And then a tree gets him too, and just straight. He's like crawling him into the into the door. Yes, both of them. and then yes. and then that's when they get the car mm-hmm. with the kids in there, and launches them, dude. Yeah. Launches the heck out of them, and mm-hmm. this is one part that I think uh, kind of scared me when I was little, was because at one point the car is inside the mouth and it splits in half. And you see them, there's this perspective through the window, through the back window, and it just shows what the teeth, or its teeth are just circling all the wood. And I just yeah, fear that, that is like, sick, huh? Yeah, the esophagus. Yeah, yeah I it's just like fear, like, falling in there, and I'm like... Yeah. Just get, like, ground like, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, the thought of, I was scared of that would happening to me and them. Yeah. And so that's why that part scared me. I always remember that part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always thought it was really spooky, too, when they... They get, you know, ju- tracked in there. They jump out of the car before they get eaten, and then it goes to sleep. Yeah. And it's just them in a abandoned old house with yeah. no one there. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it reminds me of, um, you watch the newer It. Yeah. When they go to that house, and it's like, it's kind of the same vibe where you don't know what's there. Mm-hmm. There could be anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it was just creepy to me. Yeah, definitely. So. <laughs> and they have the, what's it called? The Super Soakers is gun. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, and they set up the whole, you shoot that little thing, and it yeah. spits out liquid. The yeah. Yeah. That's where we get the iconic. Well, if that if the house has the front or teeth, and the carpet is the tongue, then that must be the uvula. Yeah. Like, and oh. Chowder's like, oh, so it's a girl house. <laughs> 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 She's like, what? No, it, that doesn't mean anything. Everyone has a uvula. She goes, I don't not me. <laughs> not me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Chowder, yeah. dude, yeah. absolute classic. But yeah, my last uh, favorite scene was the the cops pulling up for that second time, and eventually them ending up inside of the house. Oh, okay. So, do you guys got anything after that? I think I s- we have to talk about when the house comes to life. Yeah, the ending. The ending. It's just. Yeah, I will say I think it is so sick when <laughs> the when the house comes to life and is going whoa, whoa, the walking design around with is the trees. Sick. I bet that yeah. like well, this came out. I read there was a fact that this came out. This was the second film to get on like real three D. I so imagine that would just I be imagine the the this behemoth of a house just whoa. Yeah. Would be sick. Yeah, I love the design of it too. Like the the eyes, you can see perfectly, yeah. and they're all scowled. The teeth are going crazy, mm-hmm. like piranha teeth. Yeah, the tree is like intertwined into it to move yeah. it. It's so, yeah. it's so genius. Yeah. The design. I even love the second phase too. Yes, and like and the second phase makes it even more scary. Looking. Yes, dude. Yeah, it's like unpredictable. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, but that yeah, even that li- and it's kind of like wholesome too, or. I don't want to say wholesome, but it's like there's intimate moments within this like lead up to the fight too with Nevercracker too. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like, yeah, where we get the backstory I'm as so of what happened. I'm so constant. surprised that it's deeper, you yeah. know. And Nevercracker was this, he was the sham enemy. He wasn't really the whole time. Yeah, and it just made me feel a lot more for he the guy. He really loved her. Mm-hmm. He did. He loved her, and 45 years he's been through the ringer with yeah. her, and it's. It's almost like you feel bad yeah. for the guy. Mm-hmm. So, super surprising last yeah. scene. Yeah, definitely. Well, if that's it for favorite scenes, do we want to move into best quotes? Yeah. All right. What do we got? I the f- My first one will have to be, I think I killed him. <laughs> and he goes, oh, I think I've committed murder. Oh, the manslaughter. No. It's an accident. And it's called manslaughter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's my first Dude, one. Dude, my favorite one, my first favorite one is when they call the cops for the first time. <laughs> the cop rolls up and he's like, uh, what's going on? I was, fu- I was for, I was in the forest fighting with the bear claw. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, ha ha ha. I was eating a donut. <laughs> 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 for no reason, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that killed me. I I even love to that first interaction whenever they're telling them like what's going on with the house, and they're like, we it's it's taking people's toys and all that stuff, and it even ate a dog. <laughs> and then Nick Cannon's character is all, doggy down. <laughs> what kind of situation, dude? Yeah. Get back up and all stuff. It's so funny. And then that's when we find out like he was like, we don't have backup. There is no backup. It's just us. It's yeah. just us and then Judy at the station. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's so good. We said the other ones. Let's uh, eat tinfoil. Uh, uvula. Yeah. Oh, I, there was a touching one, too, with Mr. Nevercracker when he said, like, 
it's time to let her go. And he goes, if I let her go, then I'll have no one. Yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. No family. It's tough. I man. felt bad. And he, even DJ says something of like. He says, that's not true. No, you won't. That's not true. And he like grabbed his hand. Yeah. Yeah. It was wholesome. Yeah, true. Any other quotes here? My last one's from Chowder. Okay. He <laughs> it's when the house breaks for the first time, when the, he pulls her down the, the cliff, mm-hmm. and he goes, hey, guys, look who just won. It's me, the screw-up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It made me laugh when he said it. Yeah. It made me laugh, too, whenever it starts to get into his second phase, and he goes, no, that's not fair. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. All right. That's it for the best quotes. Then let's move into bro moments. I feel like there's going to be a... Quite a few. Here. Quite a few. My first bro moment is um, a little bit in the movie when the dad is and then mom are leaving. Um, it's right when Chowder. No, Chowder, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Chowder. Okay, I'm, I feel like I just call him Crowder. We know what no. you're talking about. It's when Chowder gets hit. The dad says, "Actually, you wish that was DJ under the car, didn't you?" <laughs> and I was shook because I was like. They really do hate this kid. <laughs> they do. They hate him so much. Like, they don't want nothing with him yeah. to the point that they wish it was him under the car. What about the dad being a creep? And yeah, too. What and is he's he saying? Like, he's like, I did a bit of spying on my, my on people myself when I was your age, except it was with binoculars, and it was looking at the beautiful Jensen twins. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, but that was all over once I met your beautiful mother. <laughs> Stupid. Oh, dude. Yeah weirdo mm-hmm. um another one for me was whenever we get introduced to z or elizabeth the baby i know isn't it so like she's all in pink she's like yeah we're gonna have so much fun she's and have like, all these activities yeah and she like pulls up the house listening to olivia newton john and all this stuff and you know thinking she's totally different and then as soon as they walk in dj's like they're gone already she's like and she's like oh they are they're they're gone okay cool and she starts like t- becomes this whole totally different person and is like, you know the rules. I don't do shrinky dinks. No tucking no in. No tucking in. Nothing like that. And she's like, I'm not your mom. I'm not your friend. And blah, 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 and all this stuff. And DJ's like, I know you don't have to tell me that I'm not a baby. I'm a grown up. And uh, like, you don't have to tell me what to do or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. And she grabs this pot and goes, breaks it and goes, oh my gosh, DJ, why did you break that? <sighs> I was like, no, she's going to gaslight this freaking kid and try to spin this false narrative. And then she even rubs it in his face, too, and she's like, hey, tell me something. Who are they going to believe? Go to your room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, oh, dude, I'd be pissed as a kid. Yeah. He has no power. Yeah, none at all. Yeah, I, I freaking have a bro moment with uh, Bones when he comes <laughs> over, dude. He, why is he just a jerk? Yeah, He's got to be the worst person. He's the worst. He's also the ugliest person I've ever <laughs> seen. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, something about his design's off-putting. <laughs> yeah. He's got, like, the longest nose, too, huh? And head. Like, he's got a weird-shaped head. Pull, you got him over there? Is he? Yeah. Oh, and his hair is not doing him any... Dude, his head is huge. Yeah. yeah. But also, like his a... voice is iconic. He's voiced by Jason Lee. Yeah. And um, anytime I think of Bones, I think of, Happy Halloween, doofus! <laughs> you know, like, that, like like slacker punk that's gonna like you know mess with people and all this stuff but right yeah it's i mean he his his whole scene that he's in is just a bro moment where like he starts you know tearing up dj's little stuffed animal that he likes before making out with it and slipping it tongue <laughs> and all that crap and then going across the house like uh going across the street in like a drunken confusion and being like, I'm on your lawn, never crack Stupid. here. Woo! And, you know, eventually gets sucked into the house and and got said bye-bye to. I don't know. I mean, he he ends up coming back at the end. But True. Well, he, he should have stayed gone. <laughs> yeah. She's a freak. Yeah, for real. Yeah. That was um, my, my first one. Another one for me was whenever DJ wakes up in the middle of the night after having that nightmare, he realizes it's like... 11 p.m. or something like that the phone call yeah and so you know he's getting all these we- weird phone calls and he like star 69's the f- no phone number back and he could hear the phone across the street in the house ringing yeah so he's like the house is calling me what next going on right so then he calls chowder and he's like chowder what are you doing are your parents home 
and Chowder's like, uh, no, my mom, my dad's still at the pharmacy and my mom's at the movies with a personal trainer. And I was, I never I noticed this as a kid until now. Yeah, I didn't he, catch it. I was like, he oh, they, straight up, mom. they straight up just threw in like a cheating joke, a cheating mom joke at the movies with a personal trainer at 11 p.m. That is why. That's why. <laughs> yeah. I, think it, I think when he says at the pharmacy, the bar. Oh, I, no, because he actually says like, you need to go to your dad's pharmacy and steal the cough syrup. Mm. So whenever he's like oh, stealing yeah, it yeah, all, yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. I don't want to steal from my dad. But I, yeah. I just I just thought about the bar because yeah, that's one of my yeah. favorite quotes too. We did talk about where he's like, he's like, any qu- DJ says any questions and Chatter is like, uh, yeah, are you crazy? I don't want to steal from my dad and go and die in a house and do all this stuff. And then uh, freaking Jenny was like, yeah, I don't know, it could work. He's like, I think it might be a good idea. And he goes, oh yeah, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> 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 like he immediately switches up on him. Yeah. Um, another bro moment for me after that was um, whenever they – so this whole scene, actually, it could be a bro moment. Wherever Chowder comes over and DJ starts telling him, like, dude, the house has been calling me and, like, all this stuff. And Nevercracker, you know, is gone and it's it's really freaking me out. And so Chowder goes over there and is like, dude, like, let's ding-dong ditch the place. I'm going to show you that there's nothing going on in this house and, you know, we'll be fine. So they go over there. They eventually ding dong ditch the house and are trying to mock it and everything. And it, it comes back to life. And uh, as they're running back to the house, they're um, you know sitting there screaming, opening up the door and everything. And you hear DJ go, "Don't look back!" And Chowder's the last one to shut the door, and he kind of looks back, and the house goes, <laughs> "He got the house goes ah!" Get real quick, and he goes, "Ah! I looked back!" <laughs> 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 It's super funny. <laughs> it's great, man. He's yeah. he's the best. Yeah. Um, how about when we find out what, how Constance basically dies? Yeah, when they get pushed down into like the basement and, and they see a cage. <sighs> Yo, yeah. that is just nightmare fuel for yeah. these kids, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's that, dark too. That is it dark. Is. It yeah. is. Especially when they see it, like I'm c- I'm kind of surprised that they show like. How the it bones. looks like no, like just the cemented body, like yeah. and like how freaky it looks, you know, like if 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 that were done in any context outside of animation, it would be like, dude, this is messed up. Yeah, like this is some, kinda, like this is like, like, yeah, this is some weird like, this is freaky, you know, and um, you know they like see that there's this whole shrine and all this stuff, and they're like this must be where he buried her after he ate her and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, because they thought he ate. Yeah, because so many accidents. That's what the bones. myth is. That's what Bones yeah. even says, too. Yeah. And he overhears them. Yeah. And so eventually, like, DJ trips and falls under the concrete, like, eventually shatters, and it just reveals her skeleton after. Dude, <sighs> that yeah. is just... I think it's supposed to be a mirror scene of when... Nebercracker falls on him and then he falls on her. Yeah. And it's because that's it's that same like nose to nose action. Yeah. But man, I, would I be freaking terrified oh, yeah. if I just saw this what looks like a body just, you know, In crack case, away. Yeah. 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 That's wild. Yeah. Another bro for me a, a little bit before that is whenever they meet Jenny for the first time and she comes back into the house and Chowder's dad calls him on the phone. And, um, you know, he grabs the phone and Z's like, he's worried about you. And he goes, he should be. And he go, goes into his DJ's room and is talking to his dad. And he's like, dad, I'm sorry. I forgot. I love you. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. I love you. Bye. And he hangs up. And right as he does, um, <laughs> DJ and Jenny walk into the room and he like acts like he's on the phone again real quick. And this part as, as a kid used to make me laugh so hard where he's like sitting there and he goes, well, Dad, why don't you kiss my hairy butt? <laughs> then he like acts like he hangs up and again. He goes, "Hey, DJ, you got any beer?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you try to act, act like, hard for her. Yeah. And he goes, "Oh, hello, Miss Jenny. Oh, okay, nice yeah, to meet stupid. you." Stupid. Yeah, it's super funny. Mm-hmm. Um, another one for that. The um, the dog getting snatched up <laughs> was quick too. True. Goes over there to pee, and then. It, it, and you could see the house like open its shutters just a little bit, and it goes, 
takes his it tongue. real quick. Yeah. 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 Um the whole ending is a big bro moment too. Like Dude. the whole like second phase fight and all mm. that stuff is pretty wild as in well. In the uh crane and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> I love I love that Chowder went from this like just shy guy who didn't want to do anything to to being in a freaking crane going like doing all of his like yeah. and just like gripping <laughs> into it like it yeah. just felt yeah it kind of looks like a like a like especially that second phase it looks like a transformer yeah. honestly um but to see him kind of gain his confidence as he's trying to save his friends is great yeah um what about jenny being like a better quarterback than tom brady ever was <laughs> Bro, what oh, was and that like oh, throw? Oh, beaming uh like that dynamite to <laughs> to DJ as he's swinging up on the crank yeah. to catch it and then get her on the roster, bro. Yeah, She's for best real. case scenario right there. Yeah. What about when she kisses him to give him confidence? Uh, yeah. I thought that was wild. It's funny too. He's like, lips. I kissed a girl. He's like, I'm okay if I die now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, th- and eventually, like the actual ending, whenever Nevercracker's like dancing with Constance Ghost, mm-hmm. like one last time, and you hear him say, "Like, we've been plagued by this thing for forty-five years, and now we're free. Mm-hmm. Like, we we don't have to worry about it anymore." And they, you know, give back to all the people that he once took toys from, and you know, hand them out for Halloween that night. Yeah, that was. <laughs> It was nice. Yeah. Like a little character redemption moment there. Yeah, where definitely. the little girl comes back and gets her tricycle back. And yeah. Chowder gets his basketball finally. It just feels yeah. feels real wholesome. What, ab- what about whenever he does like the little switch up on him for a second just to joke with him? Yeah. And he's like, he's like, hey, get off my stay lawn. Stay off my lawn. <laughs> and then <laughs> he's like, I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, was, I was, it was such a... Um, Bro moment to me to to see finally at the end of the night when after the house blows up they're finally gonna go trick or treating again after him saying I'm not doing this and he just really gets his what's it all called? the dirt all the yeah. dirt around his eyes so that's the word I was looking for yeah. and just makes him look like a pirate I think yeah yeah dirty pirate yep yeah also so. the the parents coming home and not asking a thing why well, the house is gone yeah <laughs> literally gone it's just an child. empty lot. Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like, gotta be the most oblivious parent yeah, like, ever. Whatever. Yeah. Crazy. All they care about is that tooth. Yeah, seriously. All right. Any other bro moments here? Nope. That's it for me. Okay. Well, then let's get into facts with the bros. Yeah, let me hit you with the budget of what it took to make this movie. And it was actually, I thought quite a bit, it was $75 million to make this movie. Mm. Yeah. $75 million? Okay. Open a weekend, it made twenty two point two million. Um, gross for U.S. and Canada was seventy three point six million, and gross worldwide is one hundred and forty one point eight million. Okay, so yeah. it made its money worldwide. No Monster House two. No Monster House two, which is we don't need. I think it. is a good thing. Yeah, we don't need it. Yeah, not even close. Uh, but yeah, what, what are you gonna say? It's never cracker she's taking back. over the house. Or yeah, she's yeah. back. Never cracker died, and now there's another one. Oh, see that would. Or just it could be like yeah. all the pieces that that where they, they she died, they formed back together and. Yeah, they could. They could have done something. Yo, how s- it's like the ship of Theseus. Yeah. We talk about which one's the real Constance, which one's yeah. the real monster. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I'd watch that. <laughs> I would watch that. Um, <laughs> I was kind of shocked to find out that this movie got Oscar nominated for Dude, best animated film. I saw that and I was shook. I was reading it and I was like, "That is crazy." Did not win though. It did, no, not, it did win. not win. It went real quick. It went against Cars and Happy Feet, and Happy Feet was the one that won. Oh wow! Yeah, that's surprising. That is surprising. I've never seen Happy Feet, but automatically I would have chosen. I've cars. seen it. I've seen it once, but yeah, it's good. It's I not like the one that. I've come back to. I like Happy Feet. Happy Feet too. I'm. It's 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 that same thing where it's like he was dropped as a child and now he's different and he's shunned by the community, but then, you know, he brings like it's it's one of those ones too where you you don't expect it to be as wholesome as as it is. Mm. Um, which one is thing I, like I remember it. about Happy Feet was one of the penguins singing, "Don't push me because I'm close, close to the edge." edge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's mm. classic. Um, 
fact here that I have about Monster House. Apparently, as of 2018, so this could be wrong as of now, but up until 2018, oh. this is the only motion picture or motion capture film to feature an entirely original story and not be based on existing source material. Oh, wow. So that was pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Think that uh, to think that a film like Monster House is holding that title is kind of wild. <laughs> but um, and then another thing too that I found was thought was pretty crazy. In order to keep the movie PG rated, um, the the victims that the house had eaten had to come back to life during the end credits in order for it to keep its PG rating. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, everyone was like coming back from the grave, like and they were like, "Yeah, what did, did we just?" And the cops were like, "Don't." Don't yeah. talk about it. Yeah. It's Halloween. Let's just go. Yeah. Well, to also help maintain that PG rating, they had to change some lines. And Chowder's line was supposed to be... No, oh, I think it's funny. <laughs> it's supposed it's to be, DJ, you piss in bottle. <laughs> and they had to redub it to, you pee like, in that's, bottle. that's your pee, man. <laughs> and um, that actually helped to maintain the PG rating, too. Oh, okay. That's funny. Interesting. There's only there's a couple of uh, foreshadowing scenes I thought were really cool. One I talked about was the the shadow being an overweight person's hand, uh, for, mm-hmm. uh, foreshadowing her. There's also a scene too when they're going down there and you see the cage, and you see I think it might be when in the flashback when you see kind of what happens to Constance. But one of her photos says Constance. She's as big as a house. Oh. Which is that's funny, good. and then obviously when he talk when they talk about the uvula and he says, "Oh, it's a girl," that <laughs> should be that's that's a subtle foreshadowing of the house Chowder being, being right. Yeah, <laughs> really, Chowder yeah. being right. So I thought I thought those were pretty funny that they they took the time to make it seem like she's it was her all along. Yeah, mm. yeah. I have another one here that I didn't. I w- I would have never known, and it's kind of funny, but un- unfortunate for the guy who played Skull. Uh, John Heater, who also played Napoleon Dynamite and would voice uh, characters like Chicken Joe and Surf's Up and uh, things like that. He apparently, he tripped over wiring <laughs> the first day on set and ended up breaking his ankle <laughs> on the first day. Bro, that's got to be Yeah. I wonder if he was doing the mocap too stuff. He, pr- I mean, everyone had to. Yeah. So, so the what? The motion capture where you put the suit on with, with the, the Oh, yeah, yeah, everything. yeah. I saw, th- I saw some stills. On IMDb that they were some people like that. Yeah. I'd seen something actually on IMDb, people questioning like how the the uh, the dynamite at the end made that big of an explosion. Like that one bundle of dynamite made that big of an explosion. Right. Well, it was three of them. Right. And so I guess a lot of people, you know, they they, they tend to forget that the, the house still has all of its items oh in yeah, there. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. And there so was all of the... It's easy to forget that there were also tons of explosives in the house that that uh, Mr. Nevercracker had, and they just had one little piece, right? So they threw it all the way in there, and that's why we got the big old explosion there. Yes. I totally forgot about that, too. Yeah. All right. I also have here, too, that the first animated film to be... This was the first animated film to be made using Sony's animation rendering software. Oh, really? Yeah. So we would only uh, progress. Yeah, I mean, look at Sony now making Spider-Man 2. Yeah. Yes. Seriously, that's one thing I wanted to talk about. Either in the what did work or didn't work category was the the CGI and the mm. animation s- style. Mm. Mm. So well, we can move on from that. Yeah, I'm done with facts. If you are yeah. okay, I got a couple more here that I think are pretty interesting. Um, and I p- apparently this one I had no idea until I came across it. But in the original screenplay of the film, DJ and Chowder were supposed to get harassed by two bullies named Ryan and Cameron, who then would get eaten by the house after DJ purposely lured them into the house. Really? Yeah. Oh. That sounds smart. Yeah. And so the the two characters were then removed from the screenplay because the studio thought that their death was way too dark Mm. and that the bullies combined with DJ's cruel babysitter and the babysitter's boyfriend and Nebercracker just made the film seem too too cruel. Mm. Um, But yeah. I think it, I don't know. I think it kind of would have been strange to to add that in there because then like DJ like really would have been responsible for some people's deaths. Yeah, he's already kind of guilty about Nevercracker. Yeah, it would be weird if he did it to others. Yeah, honestly, it's those kids' fault. Why they go in there? Why they bully? Yeah, I don't know. 
But yeah, and then the last one I wanted to to bring up here was just in involving a backstory between Skull and Bones. And um apparently they there's like some sort of like um link that they are in like a like amateur like heavy metal band because Z wears this shirt called Skull and Bones. And then she plays a tape whenever she first enters the house that also says Skull and Bones live at the smell. Mm. And um, so it's kind of like supposed to be hinted at that like Skull and Bones are like a part of a like a, a band of some sort. And Z is like dating Bones oh, or like some sort of like a groupie, deal. you oh. know, kind of thing. And then like at the the post credit scenes like she's with skull skull is kind of macking on her a little yeah. bit and all this stuff like it's and they all somewhat like feel like they know each other a little bit so i thought that was kind of interesting as well i never really knew to, i never really noticed that skull so. and bones yeah all right if that's it for the facts what didn't work for this film this film has so many questions yeah it does there's Where so is everybody? There's no one. True. In this, yeah, this how is a big no, old. How does no one hear this house stomping around or the huge explosion that happens? Yeah. <laughs> how does there just keys in the crane yeah. thing that chatter? Back then, actually. Yeah. Or a key in the ra- in the lawn randomly that yeah. DJ happens to f- randomly find? I think find. that came off of him. Um, it might have fallen out of Nevercracker's like, pocket or something. Yeah, I think, yeah. He, I think he was wearing it. Yeah. There's a lot there. There's There's like... It's too coincidental that, like, they got away with what they did. Yeah. yeah. And th- so uh, what I want to say is, <coughs> excuse me, you can watch this movie and you can be like, bro, what? Why? Like, uh, how? So there's just a lot of hows, and it kind of takes away from the movie because you're like, that would never happen. Mm. And ev- even, like, in a cu- in an animation, like, there has to be more people. Like, there's no way there's only seven p- characters in this whole movie. You know, yeah. I think what what you were saying too, Nick, about things being a little too convenient really hits what I'm trying to say on the head as well, because like, there's nobody around in the film the entire time, and then all of a sudden, when Halloween night happens and the house explodes, now there are people walking the streets, and trick or treating, right. and all of this stuff. Um, I even think too, like in in the form of in reference to convenience. Like, Z for sure saw that house. She had like, to. Like, transform back in, into its regular state whenever she opened the door. Because it's, like, quite literally across the street. Like, she had to have seen that thing go, thong, 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 like, bring the sidewalk back down, the carpet go back in. Like, it doesn't make any sense for her not to see it. Yeah. But they, like, obscure it, and so that way she doesn't know, you know, and it's only the kids. But yeah, another another question that I had here in regards to what doesn't work, is, I guess, is more or less just in in regards to like character motivations, because I got confused as to like where Chowder's bravery comes from, like out of nowhere, whenever he decides to ding dong ditch the house, because whenever his ball goes into Nebercracker's lawn, he he's like, not he's like, go. I'm not going over there, DJ. You go over there. You're a grown up, and then. All of a sudden, whenever DJ's freaked out, he's like, "I'll go up there and ding dong into the house. It Maybe doesn't it's matter." Maybe because Jenny's there now. No, she w- she wasn't even introduced at that point. Like, th- it's not until the next day once once they have that interaction with the house where Jenny gets introduced. Yeah, I don't know. So I don't I don't know. I just I watched that scene and I was like, this dude was so scared yeah. to to even go on the lawn, like to get his own ball back. And now he's like got this like newfound sense of bravery out of nowhere. It's I don't know. It's strange. Mm. I don't, I don't uh, I'll say that too for a lot of the character motivations. They kind of switch up kind of quickly. Like I wasn't really on board with the love story between Jenny and DJ very much. And when she gave him that kiss at the end, I was like, that was out of nowhere. Yeah, that was really out of nowhere. And yeah, like they don't have any like sort of build up to their relationship whatsoever. Yeah, like it's just like they're in this situation together. And then all of a sudden she's like, you I was know? like, <laughs> out of nowhere. Yeah. They, they did not really care about that at all. And then uh, there was even a, a, a part of me too that is like, Nevercracker kind of switches up on Constance pretty quickly, in yeah. my opinion. Like it's it's almost like 
you know, the whole beginning of the movie, he's like, get the F off my lawn. I love her. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, at the very end, it's like, okay, it's time Leave to die. Leave those kids alone. Time to die. You yeah. know, and I, I get it. I get it. You know, he's not even really there for a lot of the movie, the majority of the middle part. Mm-hmm. But I, I wish there was a little bit more, like, I don't know. I just felt it was a little fast for yeah. me. Yeah. I get so. that. Yeah, that's it yeah. for character motivations. I don't think I'm going to rewatch the movie for a while. Mm. Yeah, I've watched it so much that I think I'm good for a yeah, while, like too. <laughs> I, think, I feel like I don't, like, I can't watch it for a while. Mm. I watched it, and I was like, yeah, that's exactly how I felt. Yeah. I was just, just like, yeah, it's a movie. All right. It's a movie. Yeah. Well, what did you guys think about the animation style? Like it? Didn't like it? For the time being, it was thick. Well, I think it still does have its own style. It does. Like, there is no other animated film that looks like Monster House yeah. other than Monster House, you know? It has got a distinct style. Yeah. And I, and I like that because, like... I think it reminds you of, like, Coraline? No, no Coraline, Coraline is, is stop like, motion. Yeah, it's more like... It's not like as fluid. Like, actual figures and, and things like that. But um, I think wh- why I like the animation style is more or less, too, because at the time, like... There were a lot of like motion capture movies that came out. Like I'm thinking of like the Beowulf movie. Oh, I know you. Yeah, you've talked about that. And like, there's a Beowulf movie that came out that is fully motion capture. Yes. And it looks terrible now. And and it's because they tried to do it in like a realistic way. Yeah, doesn't he like naked at one point? Yes. And and it's so strange. It looks really weird. Also came out. It came out a year later, 2007. Okay. So they were in production and, and in development around the same time, probably. And it's just, I don't know, it's very strange looking now watching it. But when I go to Monster House, I'm like, this still feels like, you know, it could have really come out today. Like, right. if, if they really decided to stick with this stylistic choice of how mm. they look, you know. So, I don't know. Are we get into what did work here? Let's do it. Okay. I personally think the story here is good. Yeah. I think it is a an incredibly original story with a lot of good jokes that feel effortless and a lot of good scares that, that, that feel pretty effortless as well. And, um, I think the movie has a lot of good tension in Mm -hmm. it as well. And, um, you know, it does a really good job of, of setting up the ending. Oh yeah. And, um, and, you know, flipping the narrative on, on the audience and things like that. I, I think it's a really good story. Yeah, I would agree. It's, it's, it's the perfect blend of being really simple, but also, I say simple, I'm meaning like kind of like friend, like it's almost like family friendliness ish kind of, Mm -hmm. but it's still got that, that tinge of scary tension, horror suspense. And I think they really blended it well with the, the comedy in there too. It's just, it's, it was a, a nice balance between all of the, the different genres that they had there. Yeah, definitely. I know I said, I won't rewatch it again, but this is an easy watch. Yeah. This is definitely something that like, you could throw it on a Halloween party or on the background. For I feel like you could put this on at school. Oh, yeah. I mean, and it's something that, like, it's, it's an easy distraction. I think uh, it's almost like a uh, sensory thing, I feel like, because it's just right there. And you, can, you can, It's an attention grabber. It yeah. is, and it's a crowd pleaser, too. Yeah. Like I said at the beginning, I've never met someone who doesn't like Monster House. Yeah. Yeah. You throw it on, it's a classic. People love it. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, and I, I think the animation of the, I just think that the house looks sick. Yeah. It looks like a face would look, mm-hmm. but still in a house. Like it's so genius how they use the different characteristics of a house to, to display, you know, parts of a body or parts of a face. Mm-hmm. It's so genuinely, um, like it just seems so fitting. Yeah. And then when the house starts to really transform and it's, it's got all these defining characteristics of like. Now scowling and its eyes like scrunching in and its teeth going out like it just is a sick design yeah and like you were saying too when the house breaks down and builds back up and it's all like the the wood is cracked and all over the place the the eyes are no longer glass like the yeah. glass is broken out yeah it's more terrifying and it's it's just sick yeah i really that's the r- main reason why i watch is that this, this house is yeah. just sick yeah mm-hmm. It uh, the second phase al- almost reminds me of like, like Souls type games, where oh like yeah, the, where <laughs> like the boss that you're fighting gets a second <laughs> and phase, and you're like, oh, dude, come you're on, just wrong, dude. Man. Yeah. 
Like, now I got to do this again? Yeah. You're yeah. almost down to, like, five health. and yeah. Yeah. It is accurate, too. You're, like, this big compared yeah. to this massive boss. Yeah. yeah. I think that reminds me of, like, when I watched him play uh, Elden Ring. Elden Ring for the first time. And I said, dude, what is that? He was just <laughs> so tiny. He tarnished. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Seeing that cut scene over and over and over. Yeah. Uh. All right. Who wins this movie if we're finished with what did work? I gotta say, never cry her. Steve, Steve Buscemi, Buscemi, Steve Buscemi, or Crowder, Chowder. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I I agree in saying that either Chowder, who's played by Sam Lerner, or Never Cracker is Steve Buscemi as well. Yeah, that's tough, man. Because I I I have to say, one of th- the movie would not happen without those two. No. Like I, I, I think Chowder is so iconic to the film, but the Nevercracker is as well. Yeah. It's kinda hard to pick. I would choose Nevercracker, I think is the person who wins it for me, but a close second I think is Kevin James. <laughs> oh, <laughs> As the okay. He he just killed me. His design is funny too. It, yeah. yeah, he's comedy right there. Okay. Yeah, All right. We I got any themes? It. I think finally letting go of your past self. Hmm. Yeah, I had yeah. this I had this whole realization where I was like I never really understood that the movie was about being in an abusive relationship and mm-hmm. like finding the strength to leave and and to let go of your past. So mm-hmm. who was the problem? Constance. Constance was, yeah. Yeah. I think like almost throughout her she grabbed that axe. Yeah. It was so like swinging it at kids. At kids, like <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, what would you do if you went to a curse uh, I was on the thick carcass. Circus and someone swung at you. I'd be an wild. axe swung at you. I'd I'd be gone. I'd yeah. be like, all right, I'm out of here. It's not yeah. my place. Yeah. Um, I also put down another theme of like learning not to take everything so seriously and to like enjoy being a kid. Mm. Yeah, especially at the end when he finally is like, let's go. Yeah, that's true. I was I just put like allowing yourself joy mm. even when you feel like you might not deserve it because it. I can see where, like, if Nevercracker thinks that he might have caused her death because he's the one that's like, honey, nobody is going to hurt you. I'm here to protect you. Like, as long as I'm here, you'll be safe. Yeah. And then, again, she gets hit by an egg or whatever, and she starts swinging. So he grabs it from her and is like, honey, stop. And then she, like, is tripping over herself and ends up falling. Yeah. But, I and I feel like he kind of is, you know, not allowing himself to be free like he says he is because yeah. – I feel like he might just have be guilt, mm-hmm. guilt ridden over the fact that his wife is dead, no longer there, and partially his fault ish, mm, kind yeah. of. Mm. So I just put allow yourself joy even when, even when you think you don't deserve it. Yeah, definitely. Other, otherwise, there's no reason to live. You know. <laughs> so deep. Yeah. Any other themes? Mm-mm. That's it. Okay. What are we rating this movie? I'm gonna go with you first. I give it a six. Okay. Um, yeah. I think me too. Are we doing demon number? Oh Might shoot! Be. I think Halloween? so. That's what I'm going with too. Six. Yeah. <laughs> and the devil laughs. laughs. I just think it's above average. It yeah, really it is. is. It's above it is average. about average, and it's um about average. Yeah. Um. But uh, I think that the movie could really go the extra mile if it wanted to. But it doesn't. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I and I have to say, like, there have been so many more animated movies, in my opinion, that have set the bar higher, um, especially like with when it when it comes to like setting up your story correctly and telling a meaningful story at that. You know, like I, I, th- I really do think that the 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 studio and the writers really could have taken this deeper if they really wanted to. Um, and that's not to say that they probably didn't go as deep as they could or something like that, but, right. um, yeah, thinking of, thinking of six as well. Mm. Okay. Demon so. number. Demon time, demon time, demon time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's the end of the episode, you guys. So if you stuck all the way to the end, we appreciate you. If you're watching on YouTube, leave us a like, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the bell notification so you're notified whenever we upload. And if you're listening on the audio platforms, leave us a rate and review. Let us know what you're thinking there. Uh, We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, all that stuff. So 
Sorry. The demon number already into effect. You saw that, dude? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Pulse are guys to make over here, bro. Ooh. You're going to start going. <laughs> My head starts spinning around in circles. <laughs> I'm start getting some, some uh, bubbles coming out of my mouth, bro. Oh, that's yeah. true. Um, but yeah, if you if you listen on the audio platforms, let us know what you're thinking through a rate and review. Um, and if you don't want to, you know, put your stuff out there on a public platform, um, then tap into our episode descriptions and follow us on our Instagrams, or our Letterboxd, or you know, reach out to us via email and let us know what you're thinking that way. Yeah. So. Um, as always, we're going to reveal the next pick for next week. It's pretty special. Yes, because it, it will be coming out on Halloween Day. Um, we're going to you know, expedite the editing process and everything like that to make sure that it gets out to you guys on Tuesday. And what better movie to come out on Halloween than John Carpenter's Halloween? I, mean, I can't think of a better fit right there. Especially either. because, have we seen this? No. I haven't. No one has seen it here, so it's I've all going to be brand new. Yes, and I have only ever heard its praises. Really? Yes. Well, if so. we if it's anything like The Thing from John Carpenter, I'm all there for it. Man. Yeah, and, and I, I have to say I'm really excited to watch it because the only thing that I know about Michael Myers as a character is that he is an unstoppable force. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that I really want to see is like something that – that is so terrifying that seemingly cannot be killed and it continuing to come after you, mm-hmm. you know? And um, I think it also would be interesting just to kind of see like, you know, I mean, Michael Myers is a household name, Yeah, you know, like people dress up as him for Halloween mm-hmm. and still, you still. know, like, yeah. And this movie came out in like, I think 78 or something like that or yeah. 76 maybe or something. Um, and it was also the start for people's careers, like um, Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, still going through it. Like, it, you know, it is the it's the start of a franchise. Yeah. What is what I'm really curious to see how this started and what, like, and how we got to where we are today. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of crazy. It reminds me of similar of uh, like Jason Voorhees mm-hmm. and how he's such a a staple. Yeah, yeah. Th- I, they're kind of the same too. This yeah, unstoppable, unkillable force, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, it's, uh, Halloween was a franchise I've never dipped my toes in. Uh, never really was curious about who Michael Myers is at all. Yeah. I mean, I've seen the m- the mask yeah. everywhere. Yeah, but I'm curious. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm I never se- seen these, but I was always scared growing up. Even with little kids, where were they? Mm-hmm. I was scared. I don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the, the wha- what's the noise that Michael Myers makes? The oh, sh- 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 no, that's, that's Jason. Jason. Is that Jason? Oh, I think see? you're thinking of the theme song, the... That's, that's probably what I'm thinking. Yeah, God damn. yeah that's Jason, the... Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, oh, bro. So if you want to check out Halloween for is free, it? it is currently streaming for free on Redbox, as well as Crackle and Plex. Um, but if you have a subscription to Fubo TV, Philo TV, a YouTube primetime subscription, a Sling TV premium subscription, or Amazon premium, um, then it is streaming there as well. Okay. So if you've got any of those streaming platforms, check it out there. Um, I do have the luxury of owning it physically. I went to Mad Monk and picked it up recently because I knew we were going to be doing it. Um, so I'm going to be watching it there. And uh, if you guys end up needing it, I'll let you borrow it. But right. um, yeah. I'm excited to dive into John Carpenter's Halloween with you guys next week. All so right. Tune in next week to hear what we have to say about that film. As always, this has been the Film Bros Podcast. Thank you, and good night. Good night. Good night.